In this video, I'm going to code the ultimate YouTube AI analytics tool. Even though I'm a programmer and I should know all about algorithms, the YouTube algorithm has always been a little bit of a mystery. Sometimes it recommends videos I create and other times it simply ignores them. This year alone, it seems that more AI tools have been created than there are types of cheese. So I wanted to see if I could harness the power of AI to decipher the YouTube algorithm. My goals are threefold. First and foremost, I want to create better videos. It sounds kind of meta, but I always enjoy building ideas in public. Secondly, I want to design the best looking thumbnails I can imagine, ones that get higher click through rates and also aren't clickbait. Thirdly, I want AI to help me building titles, ones that are interesting, unique, and people can't help but to click on. If you've been following me lately, you'll know that I've already started on this idea. In the last video, I created an interface where I can have YouTube captions interface with ChatGPT and then ask different types of questions about that video. I think this is possible to build, especially with all the tools now around text, audio, images, and video in the AI space. So let me see if I can build this MVP idea out and I'll show you my process of putting it all together. Let me begin on day zero before I begin building anything. After many failed startups, one thing I've learned is that before starting any new SaaS or product or service, market research is required. And I did some Googling. I saw that there were already companies out there like VidIQ and TubeBuddy that kind of do the same thing. They have become popular recently with the growth of YouTube and have begun to implement tools for from OpenAI into their existing suite. I do in fact like their title suggestion tool, but every company under the sun these days is adding ChatGPT into their service. So rather than simply doing that, I wanted to take it a step further. What I would like is for an AI to review my videos and then actually tell me which parts are interesting and which are boring. This would help me in the video editing stage of creating content so that I can show relevant information without boring anyone. I did mention that I wanted to do some sort of A-B testing with thumbnails, something that would help me review thumbnail designs and maybe even give me tags and suggestions of what would work better. Maybe one step further would be if I could even make adjustments to the actual thumbnail in real time, like removing backgrounds, changing backgrounds, faces, and other things. Ideally, I wouldn't have to open up Photoshop and manually make these changes, instead using the capabilities of generative AI to kind of make them for me in real time. And the final thing I wanna do is see if I can incorporate DALI 3 into reviewing my videos. I'm thinking maybe combining something like captions with a video stills as something that DALI 3 can analyze as image content and then seeing if it can review the videos for me as well. Okay, so that's a lot of ideas. However, as we all know, ideas aren't worth anything, only execution is. So let me start by seeing what I can actually build. Now on to day two. I need a front end and back end to build this. And I noticed that Next.js has released a new version of their framework, version 14, which is also now server side in terms of React components. I've never actually used Next.js before. So I thought this would be a great chance to learn how it works for this project. With a full stack solution, I need a way for users to sign up and log in. I found this package called Next Auth, which is an authentication solution for Next.js. It allows users to log in with multiple types of providers. However, since my idea is mainly for YouTube, I'm gonna lock it down to Google users who have YouTube accounts. This wasn't that easy. It required me to set up a configuration with the Google Developer Console and also enabling the YouTube Data API and Analytics API, but it worked. I could now have users log in and then a token would be generated and captured so I could view their YouTube account data. All right, it's day three and time to actually build out the front end. I created a quick homepage with a single button to allow me to log in to my own account. Then using Next.js, I actually created a simple API route. For this route, I just wanted to pull out my own channel details as an object that I could then later pass into a React component. I ran into a small problem though. As soon as a few hours passed, I could no longer use the token to make queries to the YouTube API. This is because while I had an access token, I also had a refresh token, which I wasn't storing, and I needed to use that to refresh the access token, otherwise it would expire. This means I needed a database and somewhere to store all this information, not only to store the refresh token and access token, but also to store the details I get because I'd 
rather cache that in a database than call it from the YouTube API over and over. Because if I did, then I might exhaust my quota from YouTube because they only give you so many calls you can make. I think it was something like 10,000 API units and each interaction uses a different amount of units per day, which resets. So instead, I'm going to store this in a Mongo database. This took me through to day four. I headed to Mongo and created a free cloud shared database. And then I used Mongoose to interact with that data. I created some simple models in my code here for users, videos, channels, and this I'll be using to store the information when a user logs in. After a little bit of programming, I came up with this script. It checks if the user is logged in and pulls their record. It checks if their profile has a channel. And if it doesn't, it makes a connection to the YouTube API. It checks if the API token is fresh and if it's not, it generates a new one. Using this information, it then creates a call to the YouTube data API, pulling in the channel details for snippets, statistics, and content details. This then creates a new Mongo database entry for a channel. And this channel is populated with those metrics, such as the thumbnail, view count, subscriber count, video count, etc. Once all this information is collected, it's then sent to the front end and displayed in the following dashboard that I created for the home page as well as the video page. The results look pretty good. I'll probably add more to the home dashboard. But in terms of the video page, I've got things like the average view duration, the views, the likes and dislikes. And here I can click into a video and pretty much run a very similar API request, pulling in the video details and its analytic data to give me some more information about the views over the last 30 days, as well as things like positive and negative statistics that I can display to users. I also added transcripts in so that I can review what I've actually said in the video. So far, I haven't done any anything new. This is basically what YouTube Studio provides. And realistically, it sometimes provides even more information. This is where I think the video starts getting interesting because now I move on to day five. Now that I have a framework to play with, I want to introduce some AI tools to see if I can further analyze thumbnails, titles, as well as videos. To do this, I'm going to need to find a platform that actually lets me do API requests with API calls for image and video. This was actually kind of hard to find. I know that I've previously enjoyed Midjourney, but they don't have an API service and they don't really do video either. Eventually, I found a service called Cloudinary. Not only did they have a generative AI for both video and imagery, but they had some really cool content aware AI features that I wanted to test out. And the best part was that I didn't have to jump into Discord to do this. Instead, I could actually have a look at their documentation and they had API calls for pretty much every language. And I could even just simply pass in a URL to create a API call on the fly. I reached out to them and they were kind enough to sponsor this video. Day six. The first feature I wanted to use from Cloudinary was one of the coolest. It was an AI highlighting tool that would use content aware analysis from the AI to highlight which sections of the video would be interesting and which ones wouldn't. This is something I see on YouTube all the time. It's this graph you find at the bottom of a video. And after a video has been online for a few days, weeks or years, the retention metrics are basically this graph that goes up and down based on how how interesting the video is. If I could know this before I upload a video, I could cut out the boring parts of the video, hopefully having a better video overall. And so I created a simple script which would upload a video and then present that video with the Cloudinary AI highlight feature. And it works quite well. But there's one small issue. When I'm doing tutorial like videos, then even the boring parts need to stay in simply because I'm doing educational based content. Next, I wanted to do some sort of analysis on my thumbnails. A good thumbnail should visually represent exactly what the video is about and even kind of represent the title even if you take away all the text. So what I built was a system where images can be uploaded to Cloudinary and it could use a different ways to detect exactly what's in that image as well as give a caption summary of it as well. If it's closely related to my title, then I've succeeded. If it's not, then maybe it needs to be reworked. This is quite simple though. I think I can take this one step further. I was thinking something like A-B split testing or creating different types of variations for thumbnails automatically using AI. I took a look at some of the features available through the Cloudinary API and one of them was to use on the fly generative AI to add, remove or modify different objects within the image. Since I've got a nice list of tags here, I decided to make them editable, allowing me to 
to add different tags or even remove current ones and see how the AI basically responds to these queries. This now let me remove different things from the image, which I thought was really cool. I could remove the keyboard or the mouse. I was even able to remove the entire background from an image, keeping myself in there, but now allowing myself to add in a new background based on any new parameters I might design. I think I'll continue playing with this, maybe adding in a feature where you can change the expression of someone's face, like adding in a frown or an excited smile or a laugh. But now I want to move on to building another feature. This brings me to day seven. What I have in mind is something that helps me generate titles for my videos. This is as difficult as creating a good hook for a video. And what I decided to do is see if I could use AI, specifically in this case, OpenAI to help me do this. I would create a chat completion. I would collect the transcript for a video and pass it to ChatGPT using the entire script of the video to help me create and generate titles. And this performed very well. I like it because it actually uses the context of the video to create the titles. So they're not too clickbaity, but they're still useful and address what the video is about. And the next thing I'd like to do is build a timestamp generator, but I've run out of time. So I've decided to put this website up live. You can check it out yourself at YouTube Analytics AI. And I haven't even gotten to the best part, which is the fact that while making this video, I found out that this website called View Stats by Mr. Beast was released just recently. Not only does it give me all the details about my videos, it also does some cool things like show me how many times I've changed my thumbnails and my titles and what kind of views and performance each one is getting. Well, I'm not going to give up though. I'm going to see how far I can use AI to take this project. 